You know, when you think about the march, it really is an amazing event on many levels. Nobody had done a march like this, ever tried to do a march, a demonstration like this before. The idea was to bring over 100,000 people to Washington to make a demand for basically full citizenship. African Americans had been barred from various occupations, from being able to use various public accommodations like restaurants and movie theaters, the demands for equal voting rights, a whole array of things that we take for granted as Americans were things that they were very clearly, sometimes by law, sometimes by custom, barred from. And this was a demand to change all of that, in a sense, to fulfill the promise of the Emancipation Proclamation. So a hundred years to celebrate that anniversary, the civil rights organizations across the political spectrum came together. A. Philip Randolph was the organizer behind this, the elder statesman of the civil rights movement. He pulled together the organizations, whether it was Martin Luther King, the NAACP, student organizing groups, all into one moment in time. What's amazing is they call for this march in July for a march in August. And they turn to what was known as the most gifted organizer within the civil rights movement, Baird Rustin, to pull this all together. And in an office in Harlem, New York, he starts to make telephone calls, brings people together, and all of these civil rights organizations that had been working over the years make this national call. And then they're joined by various white civil rights groups and labor organizations and religious organizations, and the call goes out. And they wait and see what happens. There's this wonderful story of Baird Rustin on the mall, and nobody is there. It's, it's dawn, and a reporter comes up to him, and they say, well, what's going on? And he pulls out a piece of paper, which is actually a blank piece of paper, and he turns to the reporter and says, no, everything's on schedule. During that day and that morning, buses come from every state in the Union, and trains are coming from everywhere, and hundreds of thousands of people. So this, this desire to have at least 100,000 as a marking point, over a quarter of a million people come to Washington, fill the mall, black and white, students and elder people descend on the mall and hear a set of incredibly inspirational speeches. And of course it's capped off with Martin Luther King's great I Had a Dream speech that inspired everybody in the crowd. I mean, you talk to people who were there that day or heard it on television, and they still remember how they felt when they heard those words, whether they were in their living room or on the mall. The march is not only for Washington. It's the first time, really, that the national networks are able, because of satellite systems, to telecast this live across not only the nation, but the world. And so people see this incredible group of peaceful protests making their demand. And I think in very significant ways, it shifts the dialogue. People had become accustomed to seeing these very violent demonstrations and police hosing students in Birmingham. But to see this sort of large peaceful gathering on the mall really changes not only people's minds in Washington, but around the country. And it really helps to lead for the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and the Voting Rights Act of 1965.